Welcome to Redmond District Angling Association's wonderful Farnham Flint Complex here at Pinswood. We've got the beautiful Englefield Lagoon, uh, once home to Record Bream, now certainly home to Monster Carp, Monster Tench and some big roach which are starting to come back. We've got small pools on site, the lovely Brownlees pool over here. Uh, well stocked with bream, with tench, with roach, uh, still a few carp left in here. Uh, a very good pleasure fishery. And then of course over the back we've got the jewel of the crown, Farnham Flint itself. Uh, a very very good water for, for, for carp and for tench and big bags of rudd and very popular with uh, pike fishes in the winter. But we're here today to do a gravel pit tench tips uh, tuition. Um, part of the ongoing series we've got for Rhythm District members uh, on hopefully uh, a few ideas as to how you can improve your catches. So let's go and see uh, probably the leading tent specialist in our club, Andy Dodd, who's going to talk us through some of the rigs he uses uh, to catch these very difficult and often very, very big gravel pit tents. There you go, number 10, 815, that's one of 10 fish caught this morning. I've had a uh... 9.4, I've had uh, some big 8s, this obviously, some big 7s, oh and a carp, a carp 18, maybe 20 pound common, um, all from one of the club's uh, gravel pits, all on red maggots, simple as that. There you go, that's my little, my little combi rig with the uh, a little pin rig on the end, and this is what I do. It's quite fiddly, but it is worth the effort. All I've done is I've got a size 14 hook, and I've straightened it out and turned it into a pin. And I tie that on the end of my braid, and then I load it up with maggots. Make sure the hook you use has a barb in it, otherwise they could come off. But And then what I do when I've done a few of these, I get an old rubber maggot and I poke it on the end of the pin because the barb will hold it. And there you have it. And then that's just knotless knotted to a size 8. And that little twizzle there is what throws that out. And then to finish it, to be extra careful, I get a foam nugget in there, wedge the hook in point in there, squeeze that up so it's like that, and now fill the feeder. And there you have it. The rod is already clipped up to the distance, and now it's just cast it in. Make sure you sink your line, it is important. Pay out a bit of slack and we're set to rock. There you go. Eleven of them.
So Andy, you've shown us your uh, inline rig. Uh, obviously when it's a bit weedier, you like to use a helicopter. Uh, how do you convert the, the, this very effective rig that's caught you a hell of a lot of fish, how do you convert it to a helicopter? Tie a surgeon's loop in that, well, crimp a surgeon's loop. Pass the line straight through this tail, through the center of the feeder. And then what you do is you just attach that onto the stem of the inline feeder. On goes the tail. You've tied it off at the end of the swivel inside the feeder. And there you now have the helicopter system. That looks incredibly effective, Andy. And of course this boom stiffens it out. Uh, no problems with tying well, on the cast. Yeah, yeah, the twizzle itself, that's the, that is the key bit, the twizzle. The uh -huh. twizzle throws it away, it'll reset every time. And always, always, when you throw that out, put a foam nugget on it, just like, in fact, I'll show you how you do it. This is the way that I do it. It's a bit fiddly. Split a foam nugget down its total length, lay that in, in it goes, fold it over, dampen that down, and then just pinch that together. Load your maggots up into your feeder, and then um, in it goes, in the pond. So Andy, on this rig here, one good tip is you've got your, your, your twizzled loop here and you basically make the combi rig, the bit of braid here, which gives the subtlety to the rig, yep. you make that about as long as a foam nugget. Yeah, basically I do it to the same length as a nugget, just out of ease, and it seems to work fine. Yeah, it's it complete. Doesn't, it's never tangled, never. Yeah, very, yeah. very effective rig. And uh, this session you've had now, uh, how many tents you had? I think it's 12, 12 or 13, something like that. I know I know. last weekend I had 26 bites. I mean, I've, I've even had another carp on it. I had a carp last weekend of 30, 30 pound something ounces, but very deadly. And, and with, with this little pin rig, I mean, look at that. That is perfect presentation, perfect. Dead, yeah. absolutely dead. It's been deadly, to be fair, I, I've had, well, this spring, I think I've had 50 bites now. Oh, that's certainly exceptional fishing. And very, very rarely do you not hook up, do you? No, in, I don't think I've ever not hooked up. If I get a take, it's on. And I think the important thing to emphasise with these gravel pit tench is they're not easy. No, they're not. Uh, they're very, very picky feeders. Uh, and if you were to fish a conventional three foot hook link, you wouldn't even see the bites. No, you wouldn't. Time, would you, you totally wouldn't. You but, wouldn't. But, the most important thing is when you're fishing these big gravel pits for tench, is you've got to be on the right spot. You've got to get up early in the morning. You've got to see where they're fizzing. Wherever you find them fizzing naturally, that's where you should fish. And fish tight, fish effectively with something like this. And it, and it should be game on. It really should. I mean, they're not easy fish to catch. And these pits, you know, they're all, you know, 50 acres plus. Yeah. Which is, it's a big sheet of water to be fair. You know, and they're not everywhere. And the reason, of course, they grow to nine, ten pounds uh, in our waters is there's not huge numbers on them. No, there isn't. No, no, uh, there is. But they are catchable. Yeah, well, you, you certainly, know, you certainly they proved are that catchable, this year. Yeah. I, I, I think you probably had the the best spring you've had in many years. I would say. I, I mean, I've been playing with this for ages because if you use a normal conventional with conventional leader material, the fish are coming in, fanning, it's lifting, it's dropping. The worst thing is that drops down, and then the hook ends up in one of the holes on the feeder or it ends up in a knot. If, it, if it's in a knot or it's in that feeder, you're not catching anything. It's no. impossible. And of course, hair rig... This will reset every time. And hair rigging your maggots in a way that you're doing oh, yeah. is, you know... Well, it doesn't impede the hook in any way. You exactly, know, when, it improves you, the hook when, up. Yeah, when you load a hook up, you know, you're trying to get that hook into that fish where well, you've already got all that in the way, whereas this is out the way. I mean, I, I don't put anything in the water unless it's hair rigged. No matter whether I'm on the river for chub, for well, you know, in the winter when we were yeah. chub fishing, our hair rig cheese, and then um, and then the barbel fishing, it's always always hair rig. The only, in fact, the only thing I would never hair rig would be bread flake. I would that would be straight on the hook. You can strike that out easy, but but yeah, it's been I've been playing around with this for a while, and I, I've used it for carp. I mean, you can use this for anything. Yeah. Well, I, I certainly, you know, having fished with you for several years now, I, I would say you probably got your feeder rigs as effective, fishing effectively as you possibly could. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that. I'd say that's about right, yeah. to be fair. I mean, as I say, this spring I've had, I think, 50 bites now. I've had carp to over 30 pounds. I've had a couple of them. And 
Fenched to 9.4? 9.4, yeah. Yeah, 9.4. Um, not quite the double, but... You'll, you'll get there. Well, you know, it is what it is. But Well, there you go. That's uh, Andy Dodd's uh, not-so-secret anymore uh, uh, feeder rigs. Uh, you really want to give it a go. Uh, these aren't easy waters. You know, you will blank, but you can absolutely catch a fish of a lifetime yeah, when, on, when, on, when, on almost any of the reading waters. I, I would say every gravel pit that we have, to be fair, that they've got fish... I got doubles in every all of them and a lot of tench but they're big waters yeah so you know it makes it, it, it that in itself is, is a major challenge just just the size of the water alone but it doesn't matter how good your rig is if you're not in the right place it doesn't matter yeah. you have to be in you have to look for them put in a put in a bit of effort find your fish present a rig that will constantly reset and you will catch them. It's that simple. Well, and, and you don't need to go with fancy baits. I'm just fishing maggots. I'm yeah. not feeding anything other than maggots. Well, there you go. From the man himself. Hopefully that will help you catch a few more tench. Thanks a lot, Andy. No worries. Done. There you go. Bite number 11. A nice chunky male. Bite number... I think it was 11, yeah. Lovely fish. And of course, tench fishing is not all about feeders. Uh, you can catch on a number of our waters on a number of pegs, particularly where you've got a bit of depth or a bit of shade close in, you can catch on the float, which is a great way of fishing. So I'll just take you through a float rig that I found quite effective on our waters. So this is a Drennan, it actually says tench, it's a specialist float rod. You, you've got to have tackle that can land these fish. These are big fish, up to nine, ten pounds. Uh, so I fish uh, an eight pound main line, that's hyper sensor, just one I like. Uh, and quite a long hook link, and I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, so the hook link is anything from five and a half to, to seven pound. Um, that is what, I suppose about three foot of hook link there. And on the hook link, I use these stops. I don't use split shot at all. I use these little number eight stops. There are three down there, uh, and that's designed just to lay on the bottom, fishing the rig about six, eight inches over depth. Uh, there's a couple more up here. If I need to slide more down or take slide more up, I can. Uh, and the reason for the long hook link, of course, is when you're playing the tench, they're charging through the weed and the rest of it, it's good to allow those stops to slide up and down and not butt up against the knot and possibly snap your hook link. So a longish hook link, uh, I like to use stops, not shots, and I like to fish a little bit over depth uh, and just lay the bait on the bottom. The bait today is, there's a size 14 forged hook there, uh, two bits of red worm, a small bit, a larger bit, topped off with a single maggot. And coming to the shotting, um, you're trying to fish on the bottom, so you don't particularly want your shot all uh, evenly shirt, shirt button down from the float right the way down to the hook. I've got three number four shot at about half depth, just spread out. And the reason for that is I want that bait not to be arcing down like that and possibly catching up on weed. I want it to go down like this. I want it to go down fairly quickly in a, in a smaller confined area. Uh, and at the bottom end of the tackle, just a very straightforward insert waggler. That takes just over three number A, uh, three triple A around the base of the floats. Uh, and I have it set so that when the bait has settled, we're down to about there. Uh, I know if I'm caught up in the weed because the float sits at that position or I shear a little bit of black. Uh, but as long as that's settled down, I know, okay, we've gone through the weed, we're lying on the bottom, we've got the tackle just a little, little bit over depth. And because these tents are very picky feeders, they're not picking it up and charging off. They're often just dropping down, picking up. The bites are sometimes no more than just a lift like that. Now, obviously, if a tent is just coming through and it's a line bite, you'll get that little lift. I don't strike straight away. But if that lift stays up and holds up for two or three seconds, I hit it. And invariably, uh, the fish is hooked. So it's a, a sensitive way of fishing. Uh, and it needs to be sensitive, not because these are small fish, but because tench are such picky, picky feeders. It's why Andy uses his short hook links and those stiff booms. You've got to convert those bites into fish, in, 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 into fish on the bank. And that's about not letting the fish get away with it. So this rig allows you literally to strike a bite like that, uh, where the fish has probably not moved more than three or four inches, but quite often well hooked. It's an effective way of fishing. 
And if you can catch them on the float, frankly, it's my favourite way of fishing. If I have to fish feeders, I'll fish feeders. Whatever catches the fish. Well, that's it from us. We hope you found that useful. We hope that puts a few more big Redland District tench on the bank for you. I'm going to give the last word inevitably to our resident tench specialist, Andy Dodd. Andy, tell us your three top tips for gravel pit tench fishing. Right, the first tip, make sure you're on fish. The second tip, only feed what you're using on the hook. Do not overcomplicate it. And finally, make sure you fish with an effective rig that converts bites into takes. Wise words indeed. Have a great time out there. The tents are on the munch. There's some really fabulous fish to be caught. There are doubles in Wistie Mill, uh, in Sonning, uh, in Farnham Flint, in Pingewood, and in Englefield. We've got some fabulous fish in our waters. They're not easy to catch. Hopefully this has uh, put you on the path to success.